Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and I have a question for you all today. Are you up on your XRP? Have you bought the dip on your XRP and are you happy with what the price did today? Let me know in the comment section down below and a second question for all of you guys that really like him. I'm actually pretty excited to know whether or not you guys like airdrops. There's a good side and a bad side to them. And one of the airdrops which we talked about yesterday was the Evernote drop. This is a new proposal for the XRP Ledger and the DApp for anyone forever, a permissionless, flexible, scalable layer two smart contract network composed from the XRP Ledger. And a lot of you guys have been requesting me to cover it a little bit more in depth because yesterday I only glanced over it rather quickly because I just found out I didn't really read into it. So as per your request, I have read through it, I've understood it, and I can give you guys my full on opinion without you having to read the 10 pages for yourself. Uh, do I recommend you to read it? Yes and no. Uh, to be honest with you, it's a really early version because it's not that elaborate in my own opinion. And uh, then again, it, it is pretty interesting with the um, hypotheticals. Why am I saying that? Well, because all of this, the entire debate, the back, whatever, actually relies on a couple of points to pull through. And I'll actually read those for you before we get into it, because that is something you should know. All right, I think it's somewhere at the bottom here. So before it could ever exist, one thing that must be done is specifically Hot Pocket must be finalized at work, Sashimono should be finalized at work, Hooks must be finalized and implemented, and all three must work in concert. So this one C is one that we can actually see quite simply because it stands right here. This is an amendment to the XRP ledger, or at least a proposal, and Hooks basically add smart contract functionality to the XP ledger. Layer one custom code, let me kind of put that down to influence the behavior and flow of transactions. Hooks are small, efficient pieces of code being defined on an XPL account, allowing logic to be executed before and or after XPL transactions. And basically guys, in the really easiest form, it is just being able to kind of build things on the XP ledger. Well, if you wanna do that, this needs to be implemented. And this entire proposal and idea is based upon the fact that this has been implemented. And that's also a part uh, that it says somewhere. Now, um, the real in-depth of it all, it is basically just like we've seen before, right? Bringing the D5 realm, if you wanna call it that way, or basically bringing smart contracts to the XRP ledger. And I've also, for example, been focusing a little bit more because that's kind of my thing on the distribution and the way it's gonna work. Well, so let's quickly see where it was again. I think it's a little bit more on the top here. Uh, there's two things. One, the way that it's set up the company. Well, now the company is actually gonna be set up over in Australia as a nonprofit. I think it might actually be a little bit more downwards, but who cares as a nonprofit with a couple of members being strategic and a couple of members being just part of the team and whatnot and the team unlike Flair, is actually not gonna be getting themselves such a big chunk. They basically explained that there's gonna be 31 million of these coins and they're gonna be spread in a couple of different ways. For example, given away or really mined at the start. There's gonna be no pre-sale and 2.5 million out of the 31 is gonna be given to the founders, developers. So yeah, can't really be sad with that one. 2.5 million to those who develop and test Evernote by running nodes and launching dApps. 2.5 basically in an airdrop like Flare. And that actually brings me to point number two, which is that I think that all these airdrops and things are actually really bad for XRP. I think that a lot of the um, airdrops that are happening right now will still suffice, but the more that it's happening right now, we have Flare, we have Songbird, and now we have this Evernote potentially in the future. If it kind of pulls through and keeps it up, a lot of the serious projects with serious funding that really want to change the world, like, like the Evernote here, might not be able to actually go through their processes because more and more companies are going to start to do this because think about it by doing an airdrop you're giving people a token that is inherently worthless and just because they give it for free you have kind of an ecosystem instantly built and with some good marketing you don't really need a working product you can basically sell it rather quickly because for example with flair the founders team whatever you want to call it there has so ridiculously many coins and uh, that is 2.5 2.5 2.5 and here epochs 4 to 10 
In the final phase, the hook that controls Evers will create and distribute new Evers as rewards shared equally between all reliable nodes. Rewards will start at 64 Evers per moment and half each epoch. The first epoch is roughly 24 weeks and each subsequent epoch doubles in duration and every reward uh, is, I believe, every six minutes. Yes, every 72 ledgers. And what is it now? Reward sees after 10 epochs. Distribution is skewed in favor of early adopters since each new node is relatively more valuable to the network when it is young and small. And uh, as of this point, it sounds rather interesting. Here is a little bit more of the schedule or the proposed Evernote reward schedule. It is still theoretically speaking subject to changes, but it is, um, it is not looking too bad, at least from my own perspective, it is really not looking too bad. Um, how exactly will Will it work with the complete distribution of things and all of that? Not exactly sure, but it to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter because look at how many months there are, right, before this is going to be finished. This is the duration in weeks, but the 10th year, for example, takes an extremely long time because these things are increasing. And that's also why it said that the time frame for emission will be 60-ish years and so forth and so on. Now, okay, having said that, guys, make sure you check out Bybit. Right now, there's actually a $1,610 deposit bonus. And even though the trading competition only has a couple more hours left, you can still just check out Bybit because it's one of the coolest exchanges that I use. Uh, and right now, as I said, there's a really big bonus for it. And my conclusion for this project is somebody get me in, all right? If you have any contact with the guy, with these people, for example, get me in contact with them. I like this stuff. Might even have to send him a little message to interview or do something like that, right? Because I like this. And once more, guys, you know it's not sponsored. You know it's not just a lie to get you guys hyped. It's my own personal opinion. I think it's a good idea. I really think it is. Is it difficult? Not really. It doesn't really sound like a really strange proposal or really something rather difficult, but they're one of the first ones to implement it with a proper plan and a uh, you know, a way that it put it down. So yeah, I think it's rather nice. I can't really think of anything negative regarding it. Then Bitcoin trader robbed of 3 million Hong Kong dollars in cash when sellers in Hong Kong show up with a thingy. Now, these things I usually cover on my second channel called 5 Minute Crypto, and I'll definitely be adding more and more videos throughout the next week or so, as I'm hopefully back in the Netherlands or back in Dubai pretty soon here, and everything could just go, um, again, normally. Right now, in Greece, the internet is so bad that it's ridiculously annoying to make a video. It literally takes me two hours to post a video. I am not kidding, guys. Usually, takes about a little bit of time to record, but the publishing itself doesn't take too long. Here, let's say I record it at 6 p.m. I can start uploading it or publish it, I guess, at eight. So it's a really annoying situation. Sometimes even nine, it takes two, three hours in good condition. Um, so how the story goes here is that these guys were to make a transaction and the person basically got his bag full of cash stolen. This is actually like the 10th story I've read in the same type of scenario though. So I want to quickly warn you guys never to walk around with this much cash if you're going to buy crypto from somebody. There's two ways in which I would say go about it. One is you actually go in with a big bag, for example, with no money in it. And once you come to the real conclusion, you go out, take the money and come back in. Because very often these guys take it before you're actually there. And a second one would be to do it in a, the safest place possible. Not show your face before and not really, you know, come on time. Basically come on a really miscellaneous point. Because if they're trying to rob you and you come 20 minutes late, that's pretty odd. If you come 45 minutes early for a multi-hundred thousand dollar transaction, I mean, yeah, it also wouldn't be... You know, too crazy in my opinion. I think it would be kind of smart. And make sure you understand, several robberies involved digital currencies have taken place in Hong Kong this year. We've read all of them, I think. In June, a 22-year-old crypto trader was also sprayed in his eyes with an unknown substance and robbed of 2 million Hong Kong dollars. So, yeah, uh, even though some of these get arrested, some of them might get the money back. Very often they don't, and it's something you just don't want to deal with. So, in any country, the same thing goes, though. Then, Crypto.com is set to add Chainlink's price feeds Oracle solution to Kronos. The integration will offer DeFi developers on Kronos easy access to external financial market data. And I'm not really a crypto.com user, nor have I really heard too much about Kronos, but I thought, hey, I like Chainlink. I like the fact that it's integrating with multiple different things. Let me quickly update you guys that that is also happening. Then the US dollar super friends Chuck Cl <laughs> Cluck Tongue Stroke. B okay, lever let's, let's try it again. U.S. dollar super friends cluck tongues, strokes beard about Tether and Diem. 
Now, um, only thing you need to know about these articles and about this entire proposal, idea, whatever, is right now regulators don't know what to do with crypto. We all know that. But it's even more difficult what to do with Tether and what to do with projects that are really established and follow the current rules like DM, but that are just not really that liked. It's a really difficult story. It's a really difficult situation. Same thing goes for Binance, for example. They're trying their best to regulate things as proper as they can. But the thing is, it's actually really difficult because there's not really proper rules for crypto exchanges there's quite yet. So they just have to kind of kind of wing it a little bit. By the way, Binance has a lot of freaking ads I've just noticed. Whenever I go to Reddit, whenever I go to different websites, I always see Binance ads. And I do wonder if that also is going to eventually turn against them, that they advertise their exchange, but whatever. All right. U.S. Senator says crypto put Americans hard earned money at risk. So does the dollar. If you didn't know, why would you buy something of which so much more is getting printed? You might say, oh, but more Bitcoin is mined. Yes, but you know exactly how much, you know exactly where it can end. Your dollar is becoming worth less every single day without a chance of it becoming worth more. There is no chance that your money is going to beat inflation if you keep it in the dollar. Right? You might say, oh, but my money is going to become worth more because the USD euro, blah, blah. that is your US dollars in comparison to euros. That might do well, or US dollars in comparison to something else. But the real dollar purchasing power will only keep going down as time goes on. And we all believe that the crypto purchasing power will only keep going up as time moves on. Then a Bitcoin whale, or actually a multitude of them, transfer over a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin from Coinbase. More than 30,000 Bitcoin moved from Coinbase in the last 24 hours. Yeah, hodlers, people are buying the dip and uh, $1.3 billion worth of outflow from Coinbase just now. To be honest with you, it's always a 50-50 because they report the outflow, they report the info, and these articles are very skewed. And then again, it's nice to see. I can't really say anything negative about it, right? A lot of outflow means people are more prone to hold rather than to keep it on an exchange where they can sell it pretty easily. So it is only good stuff. And then the same thing, 13.8 thousand Bitcoin moved off of Binance, largest withdrawal since April 19th. Two things to say about this one. One, very beautiful to see that happening. And second of all, most likely because Binance was actually cracking down on their big withdrawal limits. So it might actually have to do with that fact that people are trying to get it off right right now because Binance is uh, basically reducing their withdrawal limit from two Bitcoin a day to 0 0.06 or 0 .0, yeah, something like that. Uh, that might have also something to do with that, but all right. Guys, that was it for today's video. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. Make sure you check out Bybit. A link for that one is down below. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video.